come from a town where the young never shut our eyes Pick your poison, you could ride with those other guys Life is more than just a dream when your team's strong We write anthems, this is more than just a theme song Rock bees on our winter wears Welcome to be now the home of the phenoms It's only one city that we lean on, we call that What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network Gaming Commentary here to bring you another edition of our Pokemon 5th Gen Battle. Today I have for you guys a stupendous silver rank game against somebody who goes by the name of Riki from the Small Gone Wi-Fi Battle Finder. But before we get into it, just two quick mentions. First, I want to say that every single Pokemon battle from this point on, not only will it be a Pokemon battle for you guys, but you'll also be able to leave your questions and I'll answer them in a following up answer video. So you guys can leave your questions here pretty much and I'll answer them in a video probably tomorrow or something like that. For for example, this is the answer video that I answered for questions that I got only yesterday on the last Q&A video. Check it out. Jimmy Nutricity, who is a cool dude by the way, go check out his channel, ask, are you good at basketball? I will fucking kill you. The Marion 202 ask, and are you getting any of the new consoles? If yes, which one? I'm getting the Xbox One because I love how Microsoft is trying to milk my nipples for every single penny that I'm earning, which is pretty much nil. Like, I don't earn anything. But yeah, from that, you guys can see that I'm pretty much answering your questions on a regular basis now. I'm not gonna be able to fit all your questions into one video, but at least I'm going to be able to answer them on a regular basis now. So you have that to look forward to. Also, the Minecraft videos, I don't know why, but for some reason lately they've been getting really popular. I think because uh, this funny shit happened in the last one it's really fucking crazy so nope oh you fucking kidding me you fucking kidding me yo you fucking kidding yo wait hold on hold on hold on wait 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 this bow that we got from the skeleton I don't know why it's so damaged for but we're going to use this bow to kill that creeper because that skeleton was doing so much where am I getting oh shit nigga yo get the fuck out of here get the fuck out of here are you kidding me no. get the fuck out of here Oh my god! Oh my god! Do you see this shit? So I'm actually looking forward to that. You know, the Minecraft shit is actually really fun now. I think I'm gonna start uploading episodes of that like every day because I'm having a lot of fun playing that. But um, anyways, guys, what's going on? Um, like I said, I have a battle for you guys today against Riki. And before we get into it, I'm here, Sunset Park, Brooklyn, New York. It's a beautiful summer day. The kids are out. It's like nine in the morning, yet there are still a bunch of kids out. So you know, school's done for the for the whole summer fucking crazy but anyway um pretty much because i figured out my audio equipment i don't have to worry about background noise as much so i'm able to bring this narration to you guys here and um also i'm doing a little bit of a different style of narrating i'm using a film cinematology type thing here so everything's in 24 frames at the bars so everything should be cool looking in terms of like cinema this is somewhat of a test in a way too either way guys uh let's not waste any more time we're going to go into that team preview right here now, Riki, as I said before, was one hell of an opponent because he was somebody who had actually battled me beforehand, I believe. And um, so he sort of knew my team in a way. And it's always more difficult when you're going against people that actually know your team, they know your standard. So you have to play a little bit more odd in order to be able to handle what they want to do. But anyways, taking a look, he's got a pretty threatening team on top of it all. All these Pokemon fulfill their jobs really, really well in there, you know. And especially um, Fortress, you know, I mean, excuse me, not Fortress, um, Ferrothorn. It really bothers me because I've seen choice band variants that really rip holes in teams. So I always play a little bit cautious when I see Ferrothorns in there. But the thing that I'm probably most threatened by is the Garchomp. Mostly because it's going to be late game and the Latios as well. Now I told you guys before, when the person has a Latios and a Garchomp on the team, it's more likely that one of them is choiced in some way or some regard. So it's going to be difficult dealing with those two. I have to figure out who's going to be the spec who's going to be the, well, obviously Garchomp can't run specs unless you're doing some really crazy shit, but overall a really threatening team. Now in terms of my team, I know a lot of you guys are tired of seeing this team used over and over again. The thing is, I'm working on a new team right now as we speak. 
it's just becoming a little more difficult for me to do that because I'm having to split my time between so many things. But trust me, you're going to get a new team very, very soon. So until then, you guys will have to deal with this one and a Priority Fang. Although I'm not really using the Priority Fang as much because I use it a lot beforehand. And plus, I've been getting kind of washed up with it lately. You know, people have been beating my ass. So <laughs> I'm using this team a little bit more. You guys know the standard juicy team. Either way, man. You guys pretty much know the teams from this point forward. And like I said, this game was silver. It was borderline gold. And trust me, the reason why, it will be pretty damn obvious once we get into the battle. But let's not waste any time. Let's get into it right now. So, as I said, this is a game against Riki, and like I said, it was a silver rank battle. Incredible factors behind this one. I'm going to start off with my Gyarados because it's pretty much a good lead for anybody in his team. And he goes into his um, Ferrothorn here. So now, of course, I'm threatened by Stealth Rock, Leech Seed. Go for the Taunt here to stop any setup that this guy wants to do. And potentially, you maybe go for a Thunder Wave because he most likely might switch here. Or go into my Virgo who can threaten his Ferrothorn out with the Flamethrower. Either move works out really well in my regard. So now, of course, his Ferrothorn is going to be threatened out. Now, knowing that he most likely might go into a Dragon to absorb the Flamethrower, I go for the Ice Beam, trying to scout for the Garchomp, trying to scout for the Latios, but I don't get them, so it's all good. Now, he thinks most likely I'm going to switch out here, but my Nidoqueen Queen has enough attacking power in its special attack where I can deal a, a decent dent in a Blissey without having to be, you know, totally walled by it. I mean, this guy, once he soft boils, it'll be a wrap. But I know I can continue the Earth Power Pressure without too much of a hindrance on me. Damn, the sun is bright out this bitch! But I know I can continue those Earth Powers without too much of a hindrance in my regard. Now, I go for another one here. And remember, I said in the beginning that, you know, I'm not really too threatened by this guy. If I get a crit, his, his Blissey's gonna be taking a whole lot of damage. So, but the thing that I wanted to scout out for is to see if he has Thunder Wave or Toxic, but obviously he can't do either of them, those to me. So I go out into my Soul Glow here to threaten him out with a really powerful fighting move or to threaten him out with a Head Charge either. Now, the thing is, is that it's a pretty obvious move, you know? I don't know if he knows what Buffalant runs, but it's pretty natural that Buffalant would run a really powerful physical move. Now, of course, he is going to be threatened out. Is the focus good? Yeah, the focus is good. So he switches into his Ferrothorn here while I go for the superpower. Now, even though it is super effective and I am adamant max attack, this just goes to show you how bulky Ferrothorn is. Dude takes the damn superpower like it's nothing. And now on top of everything else, now I have lessened attack and lessened defense. But I know he can't hit me with the power whip because it's going to raise my attack thanks to Sap Zipper. So he's pretty much forced to either go for his Stealth Rocks or something like that. But I decide, keep up the pressure. Go for another superpower, hit this guy really, really hard. The reason why I did this is because most likely he would predict me to switch seeing as how my attack and defense just went down. But I'm not, going to, I'm not going to fall victim to that so far. I mean, I'm going to pretty much play kind of ballsy staying in here because he could have easily gone into Latios to sponge the hit, but then I could just go into my um, Escavalier to be able to take the Draco meter from Latios. So either way, I go into my Escavalier now Reason being because I kind of predicted his Latios to come in. So he switches, goes into his Espeon. Now this isn't a bad combination for me either. Either way, I'm gonna be able to go for the Mega Horn and hit something really, really hard. Of course his Espeon will be naturally faster, but here's a questionable move. He actually went for the Wish. He probably should have gone for the Reflect or something. Either way, because he went for the Wish, the wish now, the Mega Horn's going to hit his Espeon, and even though I have no attacking EVs whatsoever in this Escavalier, it is going to fucking destroy it with no problem whatsoever, which I'm not surprised by. Which is why I thought it was kind of a questionable move. He goes into his Ferrothorn now, and of course Ferrothorn is going to be faster than Escavalier because its speed is like 15 base. I do manage to hit my Mega Horn, thankfully though, so, you know, luckily I did not miss any Mega Horns. That would have been an ugly scenario, you know? What if I missed both of those? Espeon would have still been in there, probably been able to set up some screens. Instead, Espeon pretty much did nothing in this game. Ferrothorn did get to set up his spikes and he got to set up another layer. No, he got to set up spikes and the Stealth Rock. Now, this is going to be very important for later. Either way, he goes into his Terrakion now. My Doze, who is max defense, max HP, will easily be able to take whatever this Terrakion wants to do, even if he had an X Scizor. Now the thing that makes this even better is that my Doze carries the goddamn Thunder Wave. And you know, his Sacred Sword did nothing, even with the Fighting Gen, you know, I'm max defense, it ain't gonna do shit to me. I'm gonna go for the Thunder Wave on this turn, predicting him to either stay in or switch. Either way, it doesn't even fucking matter because something's gonna get slowed down that doesn't want to be slowed down. And thankfully, it is his damn Latios. Do you know how much of a, of a headache I just solved there? Now, knowing that most likely I don't want to switch anything directly into his Latios, I'm going to just stay in there and get up my Stealth Rocks as well. I could have probably preserved those a little bit better, but my Stealth Rocks were essential. Mainly because he's probably going to be doing a whole lot of switching back and forth, and plus it would help with that Blissey as well. So, I just decided to switch out here, go into my Escavalier now to, to save my Doze for later, 
probably to absorb a hit from the Terrakion maybe. Now the guy, he has two entry hazards set up, the spikes and the stealth block, so you have to understand that I'm going to be taking a lot of damage here. I thought his Latios was initially choice, but he's actually not. He's not choice scarf, he's actually maybe expert belt or something. Either way, I'm going to go for the iron head here, predicting him to switch because I thought he was going to be choice locked onto the ice beam, but he didn't, obviously, so I'm kind of threatened out here now because, you know, I'm probably going to lose my Escavalier, but it's okay, because Escavalier's main purpose was to take down Latios and Espeon, and Escavalier did both of those. Guinevere, you are such a, well, mamma mia. Guinevere is such a beautiful Pokemon. It managed to take out both the Espeon and the Latios, so I'm feeling really good right now. His Guard Chisel comes in there. Even though my Escavalier is such a valuable Pokemon, I felt like it was okay to let Escavalier die. But you're going to see later that I make that same decision with somebody else that I really shouldn't have, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back to bite me in the ass a little bit. I go into my Gyarados now, going for the Intimidate to slow down this guy's attack so he can't do shit to me, because Garchomp with the Life Orb, even with only Dragon Claw, is doing a lot of damage, man. So he goes into his Blissey here. Now here is where I play extremely stupid. Now I know that for a fact I can kill this Blissey, or maybe like stall it out to the point where I'll be able to kill it with Waterfalls, but the problem here is the fact that I'm playing really reckless with the only check that I have to Garchomp. You see, Gyarados is the only thing that can really threaten this guy out. At this point, I had my Buffalant left, and I was putting a lot of value into my Buffalant because I thought it could live a Dragon Claw from the Garchomp later on, even if it was stuck in there with it. So the reason why I didn't just go into Buffalant to threaten the Blissey out is because I thought that Buffalant would be more essential to killing the Garchomp than Gyarados would. But Gyarados is more essential to killing Garchomp than Buffalant is because it'll be able to slow down that attacking power that it has with the Intimidate and make it easier for one of my revenge killers like Juicy to come on in and blast the Garchomp out of here. But you're going to see I make a big mistake there. So the guard top does get to run a train a little bit, but either way um now his Blissey is in there now And like I said, I was gonna stall this motherfucker out So, you know, I don't really care at this point All I'm saying is that at this point I don't want the Blissey setting up anything either because if he gets those soft oils up It's gonna be a little bit of a problem for me and plus I don't need him going for any toxics on me either So that's why I stay in there with my Gyarados playing extremely reckless when I should have actually done something a lot more intelligent and gone into my goddamn Buffalo but Whatever the case may be, I'm going to lose my Gyarados eventually, as you guys are going to see. But I do manage to take this Blissey down to a suitable amount of HP to the point where I can easily come through and revenge kill him with some other fucking Pokemon that I got. Either way, it's really stupid that way I'm playing with this Gyarados right now, man. It's really, really stupid. But anyways, I'm finally able to take down this Blissey after a massive Star War. I probably should have fast forwarded that, but I felt like I didn't really have to because, you know, it's, it's going to help me explain the stuff better. Garchomp comes back in there now. He is the stupidest play I made of the game. I just let Gyarados die right there. I could have gone into my Buffalant maybe to take the blow, but no. Now the problem that's gonna make this match extremely difficult is the fact that he has entry hazards, Stealth Rock and Spikes. If he didn't get up those Spikes, maybe I could have managed a bit better here. But either way, my Juicy goes in there now, and of course he's gonna be threatened out because he knows a Dragon Claw at that range of HP can't kill me. So I go for the Hidden Power Ice here, hit his Terrakion on the switch. That was probably really easy to see, but I didn't want to risk that because if I had just gone for the Thunder on the Garchomp, it would be not very effective and he would get two Dragon Claws on me, which would probably just finish me right there. And it wouldn't even affect the Garchomp because it's ground type, you know? So I, the safest play was going for the Hidden Power Ice, even if I did hit the Terrakion on the switch. I go for the Drain Punch here, probably because I probably should have gone for a Thunder instead to kill this guy. But the reason why I went for the Drain Punch is because I thought it would do a lot more than that. So. A bad, bad overprediction on my part. Now I have to switch Juicy out and give it more entry hazard damage later on, thanks to the Stealth Rocks, and go into my Buffalant, who I only just realized that it's not really that valuable in taking down the Garchomp. I only realized that Buffalant was not that valuable because if it comes back in, it's going to take more entry hazard damage and then go down to a hit from the goddamn Terrakion anyways. I go into my Nidoqueen now, who will be able to probably sponge anything this Terrakion wants to do. And of course, he's not really going to be able to do much. Even if he had an Earthquake, it wouldn't be able to kill me at that range since he isn't choiced in any way, or Life Orb. I'm going to go for that Ice Beam, predicting the Garchomp to come in, just playing it safe, but it's going to be enough to kill the Terrakion anyway. So now things are getting really, really intense. His Garchomp is back in there. This is his last Pokemon now. The problem with this whole scenario is the fact that his Garchomp now it pretty much has no Intimidate on him thanks to my Gyarados dying. So I'm going to have to find a way to slow down this Garchomp by using my Pokemon with hoping that he doesn't kill somebody in one hit. My Doze goes in there. Defensive wall. Come on, Doze. Do something. I was hoping I would hit him with the Fire Punch and then I could just burn his ass with that. But that's a lot of hacks to hope for in one turn. And plus, Garchomp with that Life Orb, probably Max Attack, is going to be able to run a train on Doze. I go into my Juicy now, who is probably going to maybe try to hopefully live this Dragon Claw. I'm hoping and praying it does. No, 
Juicy does not live the Dragon Claw. And my friends, at this point, that is where I learned the lesson of never, ever passing up an Intimidator when you got a Garchomp waiting for you in the ranks. Because if I had gone in there with Gyarados, rather, if I had just given him my Buffalon earlier, then I could have still had my Gyarados to be able to come in. Most likely he would die because of Stealth Rocks and plus the Garchomp doing damage. But the Intimidate would have slowed down his attack to the point where maybe Juicy could have come in after Gyarados was dead. And then hit the damn Garchomp with the Hidden Power Ice and that would have won me the game right there. But it's all good. I learned. I learned my lesson big time there, you know? That's why I love Cut Atlantic so much because it can be used for so many things. Even when it doesn't have barely any HP left, the Intimidate is still a wonderful ability. Either way, guys, I really, really, really want to thank you guys for tuning in to this segment of the Etika World Network Gaming Commentary. Guys, um, in terms of the channel progress, things have been going meh. I'll put it at best. I'm going to make a video addressing all this stuff later, but things have been really meh for the time being. But, uh, hey man, I ain't going to sweat it. And plus, on top of everything else, a lot of reception has been given, and the last video I made was really popular, so I'm really enjoying the receptions you guys are just giving to me on that. Either way, man, I ain't gonna hold up no more of your time. My name is Etika from the Etika World Network Gaming Commentary. Thank you once again, and I will see you guys on the flip side. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a goddamn good one.